Bringing on Connor O'Gara from Saturday Down South here on Halftime on a Monday. Connor, we've got, we've got a lot of folks who are focusing on what they don't have instead of what they do have, uh, which is a, uh, a baseball team that competes to make it to the stage that they were on every single year. It's on the short list uh, of teams that will compete for a national championship year in, year out. I feel like there's a lesson you could take from the Ole Miss championship, even in the focus of what happened in the last seven or eight weeks, you know, as a team that fell off the radar, that that, that fans were calling for a coach's head and, and then ends up with their first baseball national championship. I feel there are lessons to take from that. It's kind of crazy to think about that and whether or not that would that, – that, that we could see that in other sports. I know that's, that's the obvious thing we do, especially someone like myself who is football focused. And I saw somebody like Danny Canal saying, this is why the playoff needs to expand. And like also forgetting that, well, Ole Miss is, wasn't exactly a down and out team. I mean, they were the number one team in the country at one point. So it's not like they were this team that totally came out of nowhere, which is the scenario that Danny Canal is talking about. But I mean, I think the lesson is that, SEC baseball, if you can kind of keep your head above water, you're going to be in pretty good shape in the postseason. And that's the biggest thing that, that I think we're going to continue to see once Texas and Oklahoma join the conference. And, yeah, there is value in, in being able to just show, hey, we can kind of weather the storm midseason, figure out what our pitching staff looks like, and be able to come out the other end of it. But I, I think that you, you kind of look at the landscape of the conference and it, it just goes to show you, man, like anything can happen in the postseason. And they kept saying, you know, don't let the reps get hot. And boy, I'll tell you what they did. Cause I watched that Oklahoma team and I thought there was no way that Oklahoma team was going to lose in the college world series. They were on a mission. It looked like in those games against A&M and Ole Miss just was that proverbial team of destiny. And, you know, who knows what that can yield next year. And, you know, maybe it means another another program gets over the hump and wins a national championship for the first time, just like what we saw the last two years. Right, we've got a couple of streaks of programs winning their first national championship. There's no reason to think that it can't happen a third year in a row next year out of the SEC, you know. I mean, and if you've got the last three national championships coming out of the same league and eight of the last, what is it, eight of the last 13, 13. champions coming out of the SEC, yeah, what's what's to say that, that that the next one also isn't out of the SEC and doesn't doesn't win their first as well? That's that's the way I'm looking at it. And you got to have a good coaching staff. You got to have a steady coaching staff. You got to have a steady stream of recruits in order to pull that off. They've got that here at Arkansas. It's just this is the most difficult game to predict, and I think it's the toughest championship to win. Okay, so Phil, I'm, I'm going to tell you this um, because I love you guys, and this is the this is this is going to hopefully make make it sting a little bit less. I am currently working on a list of the next SEC men's program, uh, the next SEC men's program to win a national championship for the first time in program history, right? Because that's, that's the scenario that we just talked about with mm-hmm. Ole Miss this year, Mississippi State last year. And we're talking about just the three big revenue sports, the baseball, basketball, football. And I got Arkansas baseball at number one on that list. I do. I mean, I, I think you could make a taste for, you can make a case for Tennessee baseball, of course how much of that was really the, the, the team that they had these past two years, how much is their team moving forward going to have this identity that we saw? I, I don't know. That's a little bit more of an unknown, but I feel like they have a really good chance. A&M baseball as well on that list, and then Auburn basketball was one that I thought of. But I, I think you knock on the door enough times, as we just saw with Mike Bianco, and you should be able to win a national championship at some point. I don't think Arkansas baseball is cursed. I think they're a team that's just had some frustrating endings. I think sooner or later it has to happen, but I would put them at number one on that list. Mm-hmm. And, and Connor, I, re- I read your piece on Saturday on South about how dominant, truly dominant the SEC really has been, um, you know, in the last 10, 12 years in both football and baseball. And you mentioned, you know, some programs that are going to try to put a stop to that. Obviously, you know, you look at programs like U.S. You know, on the football side, USC, uh, Miami, Florida State, Clemson uh, is the last non-SEC team to have won a national championship in either of those sports, the freshman Trevor Lawrence-led team. How close are they, though? I mean, when you have those in such impressive numbers and everything that has happened over the last decade, is anyone else actually close to beating out the SEC sometime this 
since this decade of, of the 2020s? I'll, I'll say this, because I, I think if I, if I were betting on a yearly basis, the SEC versus the field, that, that's how it's going to be moving forward in, in baseball and football. Like that, That's not changing. You know, Oklahoma and Texas, whenever they join the conference, that, that's just going to be an especially obvious theme each and every year, kind of no matter what. But I, I do think that there's a good chance, I'll say a good chance, that Ohio State wins the national championship in football this year. I think the Buckeyes will win it all already. I'm on the record saying that, so I guess that would be my pick. Mm. And technically I did before the College World Series say that Oklahoma was going to win in three, so I thought that that was possible this past year. So it's not to say that it won't happen, but like think about this. In the 2020s decade, like what do we think is going to happen? Do we think the SEC is going to win the majority of those titles or not? I would say the SEC is going to win the majority of those titles. I mean, you've had six different programs claim national championships in baseball and football in the last three years. I mean, that's that's un- un- unprecedented. We've never seen this in college baseball with three different programs from the same conference claiming consecutive national titles. Because even if you go back to when Arizona and Arizona State were doing that late 70s, that was still when they weren't necessarily a member of the Pac-12, the Pac-8, whatever they used to call it. So this is the first time that we've ever seen that. And you just kind of look at all these facility upgrades, and it's just it's crazy to think about the money that's being poured in and the coach poaching that's going on. You've got LSU getting a, a pitching coach from the Minnesota Twins. Like all these little things that you kind of look at, and you're like, yeah, this is kind of how you build a super conference. And the SEC has been able to do that in baseball and football. And some would say that that things are improving in women's basketball as well. We'll kind of wait and see what it looks like in softball with once Oklahoma joins, but I think you could definitely make that case that the SEC is going to win the majority of those titles in the 2020s. Hmm. And one guy who's hoping to help one of those new teams uh, do that in football is obviously uh, their newest commit uh, for Texas, Arch Manning, committing last week. What were your kind of your thoughts on his decision? And also, how come when he he commits to Texas last week, I keep hearing about how great of a recruiter. Steve Sharkeesian is, but if Jimbo gets somebody, he's obviously exploiting NIL. Like, is, why is there still just this dub, double standard when it comes to different coaches? Yeah, it's it's there. Um, I, I think I, I think that's going to follow Jimbo based on those those rumors and the way that how much airtime those rumors have gotten really from opposing coaches. I think that's definitely part of it, but. You know, I, I think that's just going to continue to be the case. I think with Sark, it's a little bit different just because we saw what he did at Alabama. And I, I think that was the big thing that Texas had working in its favor. What could Alabama pitch to, to Arch Manning that wasn't really Sark related? Obviously, winning national championships, that's a big thing. But kind of look at the, Man- the Manning legacy, right? That's never been the number one priority. You know, like they can say what they want. But when Eli goes to Ole Miss and, you know, Peyton goes to Tennessee, and obviously Tennessee was not on the door of a national championship, he would have preferred to have ended his career with a national championship. But that's just not how we define the Mannings. It's like winning a college national championship. It's about getting to the NFL. It's about being one of the premier quarterbacks uh, of, a, of an era. And I think that that's the, the mindset for Arch. And I think going to a place like Texas made a lot of sense because what's the most likely scenario? Steve Sarkeesian is still at Texas in 2025. Bill O'Brien is still at Alabama as the offensive coordinator and play caller in 2025, or Todd Munkin is still the offensive coordinator and play caller at, at, at Georgia in 2025. Like, oh, like what, what's what's the most likely scenario there? It's Steve Sarkeesian still being at Texas, and if you want to control as many variables as possible, that's the best way to do it. The timeline sets up well. Anybody that's saying, "Oh, Quinn Ewers is going to transfer in his pre-draft year because he's going to lose that job to Arch Manning." As a true freshman, like get, get out of here with that take. I, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. It blows me away that so many people are saying that. So I thought it made a lot of sense that Arch Manning picked Texas, and I have no problem necessarily with the, the, the logic that probably went into that decision. Okay, so I saw Stuart Mandel was sort of ridiculed a little bit by by folks who uh, who are big Texas fans and everything. He, he says 0% chance that Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning are – both on Texas at the same time. I mean, it, I guess here. it like, makes sense. What do you think? With all due respect to Stu, that's ludicrous. Yeah, We just saw Quinn Ewers was literally the number one recruit in the country. He didn't play over C.J. Stroud at Ohio State. Yeah, he reclassified. He didn't play. What are, what are we talking about here? Trevor Lawrence didn't start day one at Clemson. 
Ke- Kelly Bryant did. Remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this was the uh, – we, we've seen quarterbacks of this caliber. Like, yeah, Justin Fields was in that situation in Georgia. He didn't start day one. Well, he wasn't going to start year two either uh, ahead of Jake Fromm because Jake Fromm was still going to be there. There was, there was a year apart in age. It's totally different, the timeline, the way that this sets up. Bryce Young was, you know, number one recruit, basically the number one recruit in the country. He was number two recruit in the country. He didn't play as a true freshman for Mac Jones. Did Bryce Young transfer? No. Like, what? where, where is he getting this? It's an absolutely absurd thing to think about. Like, if Quinn Ewers has a, a remarkable season this year, which I think he's certainly capable of, and if he's like one of the top five returning players in college football, do you think Arch Manning is going to lose that job and then transfer? Like what? The, people are just are out of their minds thinking about some of this stuff, and people don't fully realize like some of the some of the decision making that goes into this. So yeah, I did not agree with that at all. I, I thought that was just a really short sighted take. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV. That's BLEAV to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts.